Hey everyone, thanks for watching the CB vlog here on YouTube. You know what to do. Hit subscribe if you want to help out the show. If you want to help out even more, you can always check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandersbrew. Get in on the Discord, start talking about these decks, start helping us out, suggesting cards. It's really uh, a laugh riot and a, and a whole lot of fun. So check us out uh, uh, over at patreon.com slash commandersbrew. Otherwise, let's just start talking about what it is we're talking about today on the show, which is... Can we brew a deck with zero non-basic lands? All basics. The cheapest mana base you can ever imagine. We talk budget sometimes, and you know we always brew with budget in mind. And a lot of people who talk budget, I feel like the, it, the easiest way to save money on your deck is to buy cheaper lands. Everyone wants shocks and OG duels. And, and some people will say, like, if your land comes in play tapped, that is unplayable. I've actually heard people make the argument that, well, you know, so I've heard people say, like, what's better? Spend the money on cool cards or spend the money on cool lands, right? Mm. Because if you if you save money on lands and buy tap lands and spend the money on cool cards, you're still playing cool cards. And isn't that what we all want to do? And there's always people who are like, nope, it is unplayable. Like, uh, you don't you don't get to play the cards if you don't have the mana. It's like, we have the mana. They're just a turn later. So to <laughs> those people, like, you still get to play them. But this is an experiment. Can we make the budget for lands zero? lands come for free so many ways you get little land packs like you know if you if you need some, i bet you got way more lands than you know what to do with the basics so we can brew a deck and pay zero for the mana base how do we do that though uh this is the thought experiment the deck that goes with this vlog the deck that goes with this discussion which you'll hear in a bit which will uh, if you want to search for it it's the grand warlord rada deck but uh that deck will have no non-basics wow that's right no command tower. literally no command like no command tower like this is the first no time tower. ever on the show no evolving wilds no terramorphic <clears throat> expense epic experiment comes close it only has two or three non-basics yeah. maybe four altogether i think because it has it has an evolving and it has a terramorphic that kind of thing but this has yeah. just basics first time ever yeah so so just so let's take it away from a specific deck for a second mm -hmm. and go through the thought experiment of it you would have to run green i think uh, I don't think this is doable without green uh, because green helps us. It, there's so many green spells that help you tutor up, not uh, tutor up a basic land and put it into play or put it into your hand. So through green, we get to find any color that we need and we'll have the basics for it and we'll just put them into our hand or into play depending on what's happening so obviously the more colors you are the harder this is but i think if we're brewing a two color deck with green as one of the colors i think this is a viable option so yes first i mean just super important it does have to be green right you can't do this to a three color like you can't do this to like a jeskai deck you can't hope yeah <laughs> it doesn't make sense yeah, it doesn't make sense doesn't make a lot way. of sense no, uh, true. So, so if we're and, and part of the inspiration was like, have you ever cast like a cultivate, but you you ran out of basics? Personally, I've never. That's never happened to me. I run. Okay. I, you I, know, we run a lot of basics, but I bet you that's happened to lots of people. It's happened to me where I've like cracked a terramorphic or whatever, and I'm like, oh, I guess I'm out. And so, and it sucks. It's, and it sucks knowing that like, or, or I've been in this situation too, where you cast a cultivate and you're like, oh, phew, my last two basics, I have no more basics in the deck. Remember that, Sean, remember there's no more basics in the deck. And, but I also know it's like, but I know there's an evolving wild left over. So it's going to suck when I draw that yeah, one. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> so happened like, to me. I've, I've, I've got all my basic lands out before. So, so that yeah. now I know going forward, I'm like, oh, well like my cultivates now does nothing like i know that yeah. I, I just never cast it and then in the, in the middle of casting it being like oh wow i've got I, it, this does nothing but yeah so if we're uh the, this is the experiment where we if if our deck so we have to be heavy green mm -hmm. and we have to run a lot of spells that tutor up lens we want to run enough of those types of spells that we will probably get them in our opening draws or one or two of them and as long as so so you might say to yourself well we would need heavy heavy green for that to work you can't do that like what if you don't draw a forest what if you draw your uh rampant growth but you don't draw a forest it's like well we're, we're gonna run a lot of forests but again if you're if every land is sort of selected 
in the early part of the game, you're basically selecting most of your lands. Mm -hmm. You only need like five or eight of your other color. Cause like, I probably don't need more than two or three of my other color at any given turn. So if I'm putting like five to eight in that other mana, that should be fine. So I can afford to run like 25 forests in the deck and it'd be like, yeah, this is going to work out. This will be fine. It depends on what you're trying to, trying to play though. Right. It also depends on your card, like your pips, you know, cryptic right. command is going to be tough if you're only including five islands in your deck. Right. Obviously. Unless, but, but unless, but, but if you know, you got a cryptic command in hand, you, you're going to use those ramps. So I was like, Oh, I got my greens. So every one I get, it's going to be an Island from this point forward right. until I've got four. Yeah. 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 It just makes it so, harder. So, to it get makes to fix for your other colors at that point too, right? Because if you're using them, like I've, right. I've definitely been in this in the case where I'm like, "Ooh, this is triple uh, red or something." I'm like, "Okay, gotta get those islands, okay, or rather mountains, gotta get the mountains, gotta get the mountains." And then I draw like a double black thing, and you're like, "Oh, I only got one swamp." It's like, "Okay, yes. now I'm in trouble." The more colors you're running, again, so the thought experiment started from a two color deck where we mm. only have one other color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if we're running three colors, I would probably want to like up that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you just, uh, or I'd want to be more careful to not run cryptic command. I probably yeah. want to you, limit you, my spells to two peppers. Yes, totally. You, you've <laughs> definitely got to watch it. And that, I mean, that limits your deck building possibilities, of course, if you're going three color with this idea, but the two color thing I think is very viable. Like you're saying. Yeah. Uh, so I, I even like, so like, you know, if you, when you get to the deck tech portion, right. Uh, I run a three pipper in red and three I think pepper. it works out. Yeah, <laughs> it works out. But I, I know uh, I, I have an Omnath, an angry Omnath deck, which kind of uh, actually like really takes this philosophy. It, it actually uses very much what you're saying, where it runs almost overwhelmingly for us because we don't need that many mountains. Uh, we you kind of just need like three, like, you know, because in case you want to in case you want to cast Omnath plus like one other red thing. Um, yeah. Right. So like I, three is like, I'd say the. Two is the minimum, and then like anything above that is bonus. So like really, it's just mostly forests, because you're gonna get the mountains through all the ramp, and it really does. It it hums. It it loves that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's I think it's fun. It was fun to like put this deck together. So I I let's talk a little bit of a math for a second. Sure. So if you if you don't know what the hypergeometric calculator is, I mean I still don't know that I know what it is. Like it sounds like it's branded, but it's basically a little way to do calculations. Uh what is a hypergeometric? I'll leave that to you to like <laughs> what what is what that means. But it's a fancy calculator. So you get to pick how many cards in your deck. How many, what's your sample size, AKA what's your opening hand size? How many successes in the population, which means how many forests are in your deck? And then how many successes are you looking for in our test? Which is a complicated way of saying our population size, it's a 99 card deck to start with. We're drawing seven cards and I got 25 forests in my deck. What are the chances in my opening hand I have one forest? at least at least one forest uh and with 25 forests there's an 88 percent chance that i have one forest and in a multiplayer commander game we get one free mulligan back to seven so in the event i don't get a forest i can do that back to seven mulligan and still have another shot at 88 percent and not lose any cards worst case scenario if i gotta do one more Go down one to that London Mulligan. Yeah, I'm not going to throw that forest don't, away. Don't forget, the, the the London Mulligan means that every time you Mulligan, it's 88%. Yeah. Because right? you're always then, drawing then, seven. Now you obviously have to throw one back. But like that's why the London Mulligan is uh, maybe not good for some formats of magic. But uh, <laughs> it's why it's good for this specific thing. Yeah. And then so then let's talk about like the other half of the equation. And that's like how many spells that say look for a basic is the other part so again 99 cards in the deck seven cards in my hand and i want at least one so if i have at least nine spells i'm talking cultivate i'm talking far haven elf mm -hmm. i'm talking uh far seek well not far seek no, because i can't get you a forest yeah. Won't do for us, but rampant growth. Yeah. I'm talking those one mana, those single mana ones that like just to like, like, uh, bring it to your hand. What is that? Like, yeah, there's a lot of one greens like that just yeah. bring a basic to your yeah, hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, like, uh, so what's the one that gives you energy? Uh, 
a tune with ether, ether. A, tune with ether. a tune with ether right yeah. so like these cards too they're so cheap that even if I get my one forest, I can probably do those. I mean, some of these are two mana. So we're favoring the cheap ones, the cheap creatures, the cheap spells. But if we can put nine in our deck, which is very easy, you can put a lot more than nine and still make this work. Mm -hmm. But if you put nine in your deck, that becomes a 50% chance of getting one in your opening hand. Uh, obviously, we want to get one. So like if I've got my 88 forest and like I don't get it, I might try my free mulligan to try to get another one. But with... Free malls and multiplayer, London Mulligans, we can almost guarantee, almost, you can't guarantee anything, but we can have extremely good chances that we will be able to make this work. Yeah, this is one of the reasons why I think mulliganing in Commander, like, you're especially with the London Mulligan, like, you're kind of safe to mull until you get either a good piece of ramp or a good piece of card draw. Like, those are those are important things you want to be able to hit early in the game. And get rolling because your card draw is going to get you to the ramp at least you know if you if you don't get the ramp and obviously the ramp is going to let you cast the things you start to draw so yeah like you kind of have to knowing these percentages always helps and being able to mulligan to seven every time and just putting back the expensive stuff you can't cast like the london mulligan is like hardly a disadvantage really <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I would encourage you to check out the hypergeometric calculator. It sounds intimidating. It sounded intimidating to me. I still don't know what the word hypergeometric means. Is that a brand name? Is that like a, is a brand cute? Name? Or but is that what we call just like you know like a like a I don't know That's I don't a, know a, what like what is what is geometric about this? Well, and what I is hyper about just this? Just bought a, a bag of hypergeometric barbecue chips, so. <laughs> it seems to be maybe a brand okay. name. I don't know. I, <laughs> they're, they were good. Hyper, like it, but, like like. But it's basically like um, you you draw seven chips and you have like a you have like an eighty percent chance of hitting a barbecue. So like you're probably okay. going to get barbecues Ooh. mostly. But um, uh, there's also a couple. But there's other a ones couple chips in there that aren't barbecue. That just aren't flavored at all. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> would you eat? Would you eat a? unflavored chip yeah. no salt no flavor i have they, they, there's some companies make them where it's like this is just a potato chip there's not even any salt on this um, wow it's just like taste the potato uh yeah and, uh, you know it's okay you, you probably want a little bit of salt on there though at least yeah i love salt <laughs> uh, so so okay tangent aside I would rather call this a probability calculator right, okay. than a hypergeometric calculator. But I encourage you to use it for stuff like this. Uh, a lot of times we run. So like now I'm asking myself how many extra of my of our other, let's say two color deck. How many of our other source do we need? If I'm running 25 forests, can I get away with running 33 lands? Uh, sometimes these spells Ooh. count as like land spells. So then I don't need as many of my other ones. The chances to draw one is less. I'm not reducing the number of forests. I'm not reducing the number. And I might be increasing the number of ramp like kind of spells or search up spells. So I think we can start playing with the numbers on a really fine tuned level. And like, you know, if, if you want to listen to the deck tech that goes along with this, you'll hear us talk about that in a little more detail. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a ve very interesting philosophy when it comes to lands using those single green mana pull a land to your hand only cards. Like, I know we've employed that in the past and for cards, for spe specifically for decks where you want to be casting, you know, little cheap sorceries and, and also thinning the deck and also getting, you know, hitting your land drops and stuff. Yeah, interesting. interesting. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, that's all. I, I think I'm ready to end the vlog around here. Yep. Um, and I'll save some of the finer points for the deck tech half of the conversation. Uh, so please check that out if you're on, if you, you know. If you're watching this on YouTube, go over to episode 223. If you're listening on audio, just keep listening. Yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, well, thanks, everyone, for uh, watching the vlog this week. Uh, we'll be back uh, next week with another one, so check us out then. Uh, and we'll see you guys at that point. Okay, goodbye. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you love what we're doing, consider supporting the show by going to patreon.com slash commandersbrew. And if you want to get any of the cards from our deck list, go to our TCG player affiliate link below. That helps us out too. And for a free way to help us out, consider sharing the show with some friends. Like and subscribe, add a comment or two. See you later. Bye.